the secretary's report was printed, are there any changes or additions to that? If not, they'll stand up to just read. Treasurer. I'm coming. I'm coming. Friday, Saturday show. So we start setting on Friday morning. 
but the vendors open to the public Friday morning. So as we set up the show, the vendors are seven. Uh, so we do that because the, it's now held at the Richardson Civic Center, and there is a lot of natural traffic for the Friday at the Richardson Civic Center. So the vendors do really, really well on Friday. So, uh, as well as Saturday, it's in a very, very central intersection of Dallas. It's on 75 Central Expressway and Arapaho. That's where the Richardson Civic Center is. It's a uh, very central, lots of um, good price hotels around there. Uh, if you decide to go, that's somewhere at the TI corridor, a lot of big companies. So in the weekends, a lot of the hotels in that area give really good rates because they're really business Monday to Friday hotels versus Sunday hotels, weekend hotels. So, um, and then we do Saturday, we open, we judge on Friday. So we set up and judge Friday evening, and then Saturday all day open to the public. And Saturday morning is where we're planning to set up the Shorga meeting instead of Friday evening like we do every time for Shorga. It's going to be a Saturday morning meeting, probably 8.30 to 10.30, <coughs> and then Dallas Judging Center judging is going to be moved from the Garland Senior Center <coughs> to the show venue. So you're going to have Dallas Judging Center judging. If by any reason you cannot get there on Friday and you want to be, bring plans to be judged, the Dallas Judging Center meeting, uh, it will be held at the show site after the show event. That's the plan. Great. So Our as plan. everything solidifies, we'll let her back know that right. the Civics Plus will be on the Soroka website. Yeah. If you haven't gone to the Soroka website, do so. Manny's our webmaster and it's just beautiful and very informative. He's just done a great job of this. Go visit. Um, okay. Is it going to be a bench show or table talk? I know nothing. I'm not in the show committee. Yeah. I'm you just announced. Yeah. The, the, the show personnel should contact you this week. Uh, what we do in the Shorga shows, I'm sorry, in the GNTOS show is, it is a tabletop show, but exhibits on tabletop, not a Tulsa type of show, okay? So we do have tabletop exhibits. So it's going to be a full schedule. Full schedule, yes. Okay. Yes. Since it's on such short notice. I need their information as quickly as possible. I'm oh. supposed to get. I'm supposed to get pay for the trophies 90 days in advance. I will I'm relay the message to you. the person that's organizing because there was no one that was going to hold spring. Right. The GMTOS yeah. decided to step up and do it, so they're in the process of getting all that together. So we just got confirmation of the. The reason we didn't know if we were going to be able to host it or not as a society is because we didn't know if we were going to get a room suitable for the meetings. And we just got that and got it all in the contract. So Linda Horton is the show chair. She, Linda Horton. Linda Horton. We'll, we'll be in touch. She'll yeah. contact you. Yeah. You'll be good. So, okay. Oh, I'm good. good. We've got to move along, guys. All right. Um, um, one other thing, make sure September 19th, September 13th through September 15th, 2019, the Soroba Show is by, hosted by Galveston Orchid Society, but it will be in Houston, and that information's on the website. Yeah. Okay, our regular show theme is Orchid Fiesta. I don't have any poster entries yet so far. <coughs> So please, if someone, if we want to have a poster, um, I'm extending the deadline to November 7th, and just uh, snail mail or email me your poster design. Um, we still need somebody to have publicity and the welcome and raffle table, and so the sign-up sheet's over there, and go look. That's all I have to say. All right. We need to, uh, we, we need a poster, guys, so some of you artists draw something. <laughs> yeah, your computer is yeah. Draw something. Just whip something up. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I'm a graphic designer. I have a profession I was. But every year, you, you say, oh, oh, well, I don't have a great program. If I could put something together, but the instructor would say, prefer a white background. Uh -huh. But all the posters we had were not white backgrounds. 
Yeah. Just, it seems like all our posters had colored backgrounds. We like color. Yes. Huh? We, we like what, color. Whatever. Do whatever you like. Okay. Just make sure that essential information's on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, judging center? Uh, no report. They didn't have any plans in blue to judge. Oh, okay. And the ALS AOS says uh, nothing really to do. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't read it. Okay. Right. AOS? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> Well, the AOS show is in Apopka in two weeks uh, this year. Do you know? Yeah, because yeah, I'm going. Uh, Where is it? Uh, it is in Apopka, Florida, okay, we Orlando will. area. But it's um, there is a they're going to do a bath symposium on that Saturday all day. It's a very bad person. That's a good opportunity. And uh, I signed up because obviously I have to go as a chair for the judging uh, committee meeting. And um, they have uh, all kinds of things going on. It's in the uh, Maynard something house. It's on the LS website. But Saturday, there's a barbecue at Frank Smith house. I'm sure I'm going to that. <coughs> <coughs> so I can see the collections. Yeah. OK. Digest, is there anybody from the Digest? Our platform says Merle's not there. Uh, I received an email from and other people probably did too from Morgan Digest asking for donations to help pay for their recent magazine. If you have, if you Morgan Digest person, they did a big issue on hats. Yes. And I mean big. It's a double issue. Yes. And apparently it cost a lot of money. If gold so, letter on the front, yes. yes. I saw it. It, so they're asking for donations to help That's pay for that. That's volunteer magazine. It is a very lovely magazine. Would anybody entertain the idea of donating for dollars? Sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's it's seconded. Yeah. seconded that we donate $100 to the... Okay. I'll send the chat. All those in favor? Well, is there any discussion? Anybody opposed? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we need volunteers. I've got one more thing oh, for the digest. <laughs> they also publish for people that have dealt with ordering and dealing with work at Digest, Simone Brand passed away. And apparently Simone handled almost everything in the world when it comes to dealing with the public and the clubs and stuff like that. If you order trophies from them, you went through Simone. You sat there and renewed your membership. You went through some out. So they lost someone that mm -hmm. sat there and worked many, many years for Orchid Digest. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that, but they'll come up with somebody to take over those jobs, and it'll be. Oh, yeah. There'll be in emails. So I will send them a check donation for $100. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we need volunteers. Will Rogers on Tuesday from 11 to 3, putting up Christmas lights low, no ladders involved. Is there anybody from this group that could work 11 to 3 on Tuesday? I know most of you work, or any of you not working and could work 11 to 3 on Tuesday? I can come up. I don't know how much help. Well, yeah, I don't know how much help we would be. <laughs> we get the hour. We get credit for the hours. We need the hours, guys. Uh, we do have a member who is putting in a lot of hours over there, which helps a whole lot. And uh, are you available Tuesday from eleven to three? I don't believe that. You can. He has put in hours and hours and hours. And you're helping with other projects. I might, but... Well, try. No, I might, but I want to put that with those hours for the bonsai club. <laughs> I still need the help. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to do something. Our club is important. Our club doesn't have much money at all. Uh, well, we've got money. We just, I just need bodies on Tuesday. Tuesday. Then on Saturday, the 27th, from 9 a.m. to 2, I need one more person to help Kenton. I will be at a festival in Forest Park, which is my little community, and cannot do that. I've got several volunteers, but I need another volunteer or two for that festival. I mean, for that 
Yeah, I need some, I need help out there too, but I won't ask you all. I need help here with to help Kenton. It's you know he has a children's pumpkin thing, mm -hmm. and it'll be helping kids color the pumpkin or put eyes on the pumpkin or stuff like that. It's nothing difficult, but you need to like children. <laughs> yeah. and that's what yeah, they, that's a uh, the Friday. I'm <coughs> sorry, Saturday the twenty no what, the twenty seventh Saturday. Saturday. Well, 9 a.m. to 2. Okay. I think I can do this. Great. Anybody else? Because they're short handed? I would say send out an email to since we have. I will. I will. I think I've done that already. I've had no response. Thank you all very much. Anybody that can come Tuesday, I really would appreciate it. This coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. 11 to 2. 11 to 3. And meet in the conservatory? In the conservatory. Okay. Okay. And that's Tuesday. That's Tuesday. I'll be there. Okay. And the other one was what? It was 27th. 27th, Saturday. 9 a.m. to <coughs> 2. You'll be, they'll be completely through by 2. Are there any other announcements? I don't know. Uh, I'd go ahead and spread the word. Uh, Red River has set the Christmas party for December the 8th. Same um, thing. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm thinking that ours will be the next weekend, uh, December 15th. Is that 15th? I don't have a calendar. Saturday the 15th, it'll be at my house. Uh, bring something to share or not. We always have lots and lots of food. And I, Dirty Santa, orchid related <coughs> item. Not to exceed 15? No, it has to be worth 15, the minimum. The minimum. Yeah. minimum 15. 15, 20, something like that. So um, what time was that? We will start at 6 ish. Uh, okay. okay. That's December the 15th. So the. Usually several of us go to uh, Red River. I missed last year because of a conflict, but I'm hoping that I can go this year. That's always a real fun time. She opens the greenhouse around noon, and then we eat around. Well, we try to open the greenhouse. We're ready by 10 in the morning. Oh, by 10. And, uh, okay. I said, We'll eat at noon or whenever I, everybody stops talking, you know, that right. sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll, you know, we'll be home early evening, I mean, before dark yeah. usually. But for anybody that hasn't come, we just invite the membership and uh, we'll try to send a reminder. I, I would we appreciate a little word if you can come. A related gift for the extra. So I, I can set up enough tables and chairs. Okay. That was December 15th? Right. Are there any other announcements or something that I have forgotten no, or committees that I can call on? Uh, if not, we are going to turn the program over to our vice president. Do we need, I, do I need to report the slate of officers? Uh, there is a slate of officers. Yes, we'll vote in November. We vote in, we vote in November. And that <coughs> slate, is anybody here know who the slate is? It's I doubt. me as president. You're the treasurer. Uh, who took that? Secretary. Jay, 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 Jay Simon. Jay Simon took <coughs> the vice president and Audrey. 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 Where's Audrey? Where's Audrey? She does leave with her daughter. Oh, I didn't know they were Audrey. Audrey, Maybe Audrey is running for secretary. Mm -hmm. So if there are any other nominations, they should come in at the earliest possibility. Mm -hmm. And we will elect those officers at my house. We normally vote on the poster at my house too. Mm -hmm. So please, mm -hmm. let's get those posters in. Okay, I'm going to turn it over, to, and you don't need to read that whole thing. I know it. <laughs> get the basics. That's and exactly on my mind. All right. <laughs> okay. We don't have a big group like we did last month. Well, but you know, here. And, you know, there were there were lots of cars. Everyone's gone, and because he knows him. There were lots of conflicts this time. Let's see, yeah, you yeah. know, Debbie and Dick came in. And, and, Sherwood. And uh, Sherwood. Sherwood. Does anybody here not know who this gentleman is? Um, okay. <laughs> that makes it easy. Yeah. Yeah. Sherwood. For those of you, <laughs> Debbie and Dick, and, and 
this one, Manny Ivar. Okay, he works in technology. He's from Dallas. When I brought him in today, everybody knew him except me. Let me tell you something. He's been growing orchids for about 26 years. Uh, he specializes in dendrobiums. He had a great program uh, uh, earlier about the phalaenopsis, how they grow them in Taiwan. Great. He's an AOS judge. He's uh, he's chair of the AOS Dallas Judging Center. He he goes all over the country. He goes all over the world, literally. And uh, let's see, he's judge at uh, judging chair at Ecuador. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> he's affiliated with them and everybody. He offers workshops. He knows what he's talking about. We're thrilled to have him. We are thrilled to have him. So, this time around, long time don't see, <laughs> I'll talk about Andromiums, which is uh, very dear to my heart. It's my favorite, one of my favorite genera. Uh, the Palinanthi section, I started growing. My first orchid was a Andromium, uh, Palinanthi's. <coughs> Uh, the Drogon Wild Winter, oh you may, it's a white cross. Uh, Jacqueline Thomas, white cross, type of thing. Um, I'll do a, like, a, little, a couple of slides in this program are very technical. I'll try to go through them as fast because most people don't care, but I like to talk about it anyway. <laughs> so, the same thing is true as I said in the program earlier for the Drogon specifically for the Dendrobium phalaenopsis. It's always been in a, a, a cut flower industry breeding. It hasn't been a quality breeding, okay? But not just potted plant to sell at Home Depot like the phalaenopsis industry is now. Before the phalaenopsis industry was what it is today, the Dendrobium hybridization or breeding industry that most of it comes from actually Thailand, has always been focused on the cut flower industry. A lot of export into Hawaii for lace and whatnot, so always been focused on cut flowers for the trade. Uh, it's been uh, for, you know, bought potted plants, novelty and innovation, uh, for this presentation, the section ceratobium, I'm going to talk about the old section ceratobium, it's not the spatulata section. And I want you to remember the word, the word spatulata section. So there's the phalenanti section, and there's the spatulata section in the dendrobium. And that's what we're going to focus on today in the presentation, okay? Um, there's, there was another section called Eleutheroglossum, which you don't care, but it is also spatulata now. You're going to see why this is important later, okay? Um, and the reason is because of Caniliculatum and Caronis, which are miniature spatulata dendrobiums, and they're used widely in hybridization. So for the purposes of this presentation, spatulata, remember this. Um, and this is my older technical slide, I promise. <laughs> okay, so you have the Dragon Phalaenopsis at the very top. Okay. And between Ceratobium and Electroglossum, which is all spatulata, you have a very high percentage of crossability. So you get a lot of hybrids between those sections. As you go down the hill or downhill or down the path of trying to hybridize with all the other obscure sections of dendrobium, you don't get a lot of viable seed. They're not compatible. They're still all dendrobium, but that's why you don't get a lot of phalaenopsis dendrobium mixed with calista dendrobium, or so laturias, some laturias. Remember the laturias, everything that H&R produces, the dendrobiums that come from H&R, like little uh, black sambo, whatever, all those, uh, that, uh, what is it called? Uh, Roy Tokenaga, all the Roy Tokenaga dendrobiums, they're all in the Laturia, and some of them in the Negro Hirsutai section, not in the Falinanti section. But these three produce a lot of the Falinanti dendrobiums we know. 
which is really Fagnazzi Spatulata sections. These guys have very, very little crossability between, as you go farther out in some of the obscure genuses, you cannot get viable crosses. So that's why you don't see a lot of, you don't see a dendrobium by Gibbon cross with a dendrobium aggregatum pendulum because the sections are so far apart and there's no viable seed when you cross them, okay? Um, remember the polyploids or the tetraploids, you've heard about this concept, tetraploid, it's a plant that has an extra set of chromosomes so it's gonna produce larger flowers. So what happens is that when you put colchicine uh, into some of the hybrids, when you're doing your, your, your seedlings, crossing them, when you put the seed into the bottles, you can alter that DNA so you can get bigger flowers. That is not illegal. Practically all award quality hybrids that we have in the plant tables and everywhere usually are tetraploids or polyploids, meaning that they are they have extra chromosomes, so they produce larger flowers. On the building blocks of the phalaenopsis section, you have dendrobium phalaenopsis, okay? Dendrobium phalaenopsis is the finest dendrobium species in cultivation. You cannot forget, that's very easy. What's the nicest dendrobium in the phalaenopsis section? Dendrobium phalaenopsis. Very simple. Um, there's a variety of compactum that's short, that's used for the miniature hybrids in dendrobium. And uh, it's larger than by Gibbon. It gives you, and those things that I'm talking about in green are good things. They have a long and pointy meat lobe. They have a heavy texture. The colors are bright and rich. That can be really good, but they can be really bad. Because if you want to go away from that kind of pink color, when you cross it, you're going to get the pink, no matter what. So it's hard to get the other colors, right? Uh, the the dendrobium phalaenopsis, the species, is very difficult to grow. And the pseudobulbs on the dendrobium phalaenopsis, they die back. That's why when you have dendrobium plants that have a lot of phalaenopsis, you can never have more than four or five of these canes. You want to have 20 of these, right? So you can produce a lot of flowers, but because the Androbium phalaenopsis, the species, genetically dies back after three or four pseudobulbs, in a lot of these hybrids, when your old pseudobulb starts drying and becoming very hollow, and you just have to cut it before it starts rotting in the rest of the plant, and you can get all kinds of bugs and uh, you know fungus because Naturally, they do that. You are not doing anything wrong. That's what I'm trying to clarify here, okay? It's very hard in the dendrobium phalaenopsis to have more than five or six suitables that are viable. Because when you have a lot of dendrobium phalaenopsis in the background, that's what they do. It is what it is. So, today you've learned something. You are not doing anything wrong. You are growing them successfully. The Bygevum is free blooming, has long lasting flowers, very similar, full flowers, long inflorescence, and the color is recessive. So you can, it's hard to keep that color, that white color. You have a Fini, which everything is negative about it. The flowers not, the flowers are very crowded. Um, they self pollinate. You have everything negative. Why aren't these your favorite flowers? Well, the dendrobiums in general are my favorite, but this particular dendrobium is a bad, bad boy. However, however, there's some positive things about it. That's why it's using hybridization. It decreases the flower king size. So when you put a thing in the background, it decreases the shortens the inflorescence size. So that's good for cut flowers. Because you have all those flowers kind of together next to each other, which is what you want when you're producing, you know, flower racines and wedding bouquets and whatnot. The other thing that it does is it then increases the number of flowers. So although it's got a lot of negative characteristics, it gives you more flowers for inflorescence. So that's good. 
and, uh, and the markings of the lip, it's got this little striation on the lip, and that's passed to the progeny. The last one is Schroderianum. It's got, that's where you get the stripe from. It's from Schroderianum. It's got stripe markings and heavy texture. So now, Superbius is a natural hybrid between bigibon or bicolor, and it blooms all year. So a lot of hybridizers like to put superbiums in the background so they can get blooms all year long. Now, these are the building blocks. In orchidology, in judging, in hybridization, we call a building block something that's a cornerstone, a building block to create all the hybrids. So these are your building blocks. Now, this, guys, is what I wanted you guys to remember earlier, spatulata section. These guys bring what I call the spices into the hybridization, okay? Because this is when you start getting the little gnarly flowers or the colors or the different things that you see into the dendrobiums that you see today, okay? They come from some of these guys, this color, Gudia, Helix, Linealis, Trioris. Uh, they're going to bring some of the spices into the hybridization, okay? So, in dendrobiums, when you are judging and when you're looking at dendrobiums and you see, and you kind of pay attention to the tags, not a lot of us do, reciprocal crossing is very dangerous. What do I mean by that? These two are the same flower, the same cross. The left flower is the Dromium Mayneal Sunset with Sugar Eye. So that was the mother plant was Mayneal. In the second flower is the same cross made backwards. Sugar Eye times Mayneal. So when you make the crosses both ways in the Dromiums, you can get very different flowers. So that's called reciprocal crossing. We don't care, but we care because it depends on how you read that tag. When you buy the plant not in bloom, you think that you might be getting something, you're getting something totally different when it blooms. Just gotta be careful with that. Manial sunset times sugar eye is not the same as sugar eye times manual sunset. Right? In math, because I am an engineer, when you multiply two things, you get the same thing, but here you don't. Okay. Now, what are we looking at here in, in the drawings? We have albas and semi-albas, and we've always had them. Affini, Phalaenopsis, where I compactum, the alba form, has given us the whites and the semi-albas in Androbium. Lineali, the one that I just bludgered earlier in the building blocks, gives you heavy texture, waxy, and elevates the petals, so it gives you some good things. So this is the one I talked about. That was my first Androbium, the Androbium Walter Oyumai. HCCO 78. Uh, I'm not excited. I'm excited because it was my first plant. But I'm not excited about the form. It's very nominal. It's, it's okay. But it's a beautiful white flower. I mean, cut flower industry, tons of flowers, good inflorescences. They last almost two or three weeks in a vase. Good for cut flower industry. Cool the eye increases the flower count. So, Everyone remembers Jacqueline Thomas. There is a white Jacqueline Thomas. Tons of flowers, but the flowers are a little space from each other. Good whites didn't come easy because of complementary gene action, resulting in non-white progenies when two whites are crossed. In the drobium, you can cross two white flowers and you get a lavender flower. Okay? It's hard to have to believe, but you do. Just take my word for it. Uh, because of complementary gene action. Those genes get messed up, the white is gone. You get a lavender flower. This is the Rain Queen, Snow Queen, AM of 83. <coughs> now you get a lot better flowers. You get something like Pattaya Beauty, Siam, <coughs> Margaret John Phil times Pink <coughs> Shell. And the commonality here is that you have a high content of Phalaenopsis, 60%. And 12% of the spices I talked about. You got Tokai, you got Undulanum, you got Strayoris in the background. Um, and of course, this one has one of my personal favorites, uh, which is a Sri Mahapodi Lake End. Really, really nice phalaenopsis form. 
83% Phalaenopsis species. So you see a pattern here. As I get closer to the Phalaenopsis section, I get more round flowers. As I get farther and put more spatulata, I get more of the elongated flowers. <coughs> Superbiums, Phalaenopsis, Stroderianum, uh, Bigevum, the Tokayan Taurinum, passes good lip, Tokai, and Shaper Longevity. So there's two big, big ones, Louis Blario and Pompa. They're old, old crosses. I don't have good pictures because these pictures are old. Louis Blario was made in 1929. And Pompa, which is a huge success in the cut flower industry was done in 1934, the cross. Not that we care about flowers that old, but they're still around. You can still get pompadour. So um, nine and 10 generations out of these two hybrids, 1,800 and 1,700 different crosses. So these two guys are pretty much huge building also, building block, uh, into the reds and purples that we know today in the drug. There's one here, actually. I don't know what it is. It's the drug XYZ, but uh, this one has by Gibbon on it. It's a smaller flower. But you have Lady Charm, Red Hot Lover. These are examples of really good crosses for the progeny of purples and reds. Thailand was one of my favorites, one of the biggest ones. Usaba times Hikamdeb, and you have a Pinky and Sabine, really famous. Stop like purple velvet, so they're getting some of the velvety flowers. But what happened here, not velvety flower, but what I told you guys, I'm only having 40% of the good dendrobium, the Phalenanthi. But you have all these things, Tokai, Gudia, Indulari, Superbium, just little percentages, so we can get those shines, we can get the sparkle, we can get the spices on the hybrids. Lavenders and pinks, Caesar was a big one in the 50s, 10 generations of crossing. And Caesar was a hit towards the late 80s because of the cut flower industry. He produces tons of flowers. The flowers last almost a month in a vase after they get cut. They can last as much. So for cut flower, that was fantastic. Lots of flowers, three or four times a year blooming. I mean, good, good plant. Jacqueline Thomas, Sonia, very famous. Stripes. The stripes come from one plant. I gave you guys a hint earlier. By falsi is the species that brings the stripes to the dendrobiums. All the dendrobiums that have stripes in the Phalenanti section, all of them, without exception, have by falsi in the background. So that's where you get the, your, 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 your stripes from. And then you have lucky, lucky stripes, a little more highly stripes, real candy, lucky stripes, candy stripes, all <coughs> crosses. Um, I think real scandy is the nicest form that we can get. But because you have 80% phalaenopsis dendrobium. So as you get closer to the phalaenopsis dendrobium, better form. As you get farther out, more elongated flowers. Um, greens. Two famous ones, Burana Green and Burana Fancy. Burana Green is more solid green. Burana Fancy has a little overlay of uh, chestnut. They both have chulerite in the background. For you to get greens in the drum, you have to have chulerite in the background. Yellows were not easy. Have you seen a lot of yellow dendrobiums? There's one or two, there are very few yellow dendrobiums. There's some. There's that yellow one with red lip. There's very few yellows. Dendrobiums, yellows, are difficult because there's not a good yellow flower species. To put yellow. The yellow pigment is very, very, very hard to pass to the progeny. Shulerai and Helix have yellow genes, but they don't pass the yellow very often. 
into the project. So you have Mary May Neal in uh, in the late 50s was the first big success in Yellows, and you have uh, Carrie Miller, bad picture because it's a very old cross, 34% sugar rye, uh, Mary Mac, solid yellow, 25% sugar rye, Mary Mac Tantilix, sugar rye in the background. <coughs> Mary Mac times Helix back to May Neal to get more yellow. Madame Leroy one is a good yellow. But you see, you're never going to get a Dendrobium phalaenopsis yellow with a phalaenopsis shaped flower. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. We can't have it all. Mm -hmm. Because we have to get so far from the phalaenopsis species, the Dendrobium phalaenopsis species, to be able to get the yellow pigment into the flower that you get the elongated form. So we can't have it all. Cannot have it all, unfortunately. Ah, you have pansy leaves also in dendrobiums. I talked about that in Phalaenopsis. Genera Phalaenopsis earlier, but you have pansy leaves. Um, this is called atavism. Have you heard the word pelorism? Oh, this flower is peloric, uh -huh. right? So atavism is the opposite. So peloric is that the lips, the petals want to look like the lip. Atavism is the lip wants to look like the petals. That's when you get the pansy lips. Boys Barragay, very different color. Black spider, bota blue, bluish. To me, that's still purple. So you got a lot of novelty, some novelty stuff that has been done. But you have to have the spatulata section to be able to do that. This is my plant, very proud of it. Dendrobium orchid on dark light, minus very low. HCC of uh, 78. Uh, a lot of stuff going on on the, on, the, on the composition of what makes that dendrobium. To be able to get to that good color, to that uh, velvety texture in the, in the petals, very nice. It is actually in bloom right now in my greenhouse. I have managed not to kill this plant. <laughs> There's a tall growing plant right there. They're tall. Yeah. You got, like, anytime you put um, lineale and this color into your hybrids, you're going to get the plants this tall. Yeah. I have one. Yeah. That's why. Not that pretty, but. I know, they get leggy and. Yeah. But hey, the flowers are pretty. The Dromium Exotic Stripe Valley Isle, Aim of 80, that's another one. Grown in Puerto Rico, it's one of those. Yellow stripe with a lip that kind of looks very kind of brainy looking with a little stripes going everywhere. I really like it. But this was an AF just to tell you that in the dendrobium, the flowers don't have to be perfectly phalaenopsis form to get a word. As you get farther out from the background, you get a very different flower. So those 10 to 11 things that are shown in the pictures is what makes that cross. So a lot of different things to be able to come to what that flower is. To me, it's still gnarly. I wouldn't have awarded it, but I have not criticized it on different things. This is stunning to me, lipstick. If you're ever able to find that plant, buy it. Those flowers are so velvety, waxy at the same time. They, they last two or three months in the spike. This is a very good cross. You can see kind of like two very nice spikes on it. Very, very nice. One of my favorites. And I can show it again because it's, it's really cool. This is the make of it. Only six things. You have Tokai on the right. You have Shularai. You have Lineali. You have Androbium phalaenopsis. But only 12% of the Androbium phalaenopsis makes this. So that is really good form for only having 12% of Phalaenopsis that drove you on it. Very good form. Okay. This is really cool and weird. No for Star Bright, Edwin's Big Boy, FCC AOS 92 points. Growing Puerto Rico. This is just weird. It's almost a Harlequin, 
but not quite. It's almost a, sorry, not a heart attack, I meant to say splash pedal, like Atleya's. So you have Catleya's splash pedal a little bit. The lip is just different. And this is another one of that line of reading. That one's cool. That one I really like. And this is what makes that cross. <laughs> Tons of things to be able to get to that. But if you look at Striotis, this color, Taurinum, Goody Eye, those flowers are, have all the twisted petals and everything, and then to get a flower that's form is kind of stable, it's pretty, pretty big achievement. Hawaii Stripes, Roy Tokunaga, times Nina. So Roy Tokunaga managed, after many attempts, to really put a Latoria section dendrobium into a Phalaenopsis dendrobium and be successful. He finally was able to do it. And that's what we got. We got uh, this Hawaiian stripes, which I think is a very nice dendrobium. And uh, you have a very nice square lid, which I think is what you want. But it is a Roitokunaga times Nira, which is Latoria. Uh, I told you guys earlier that it's very difficult. Uh, he, he managed to do it. But you see that form of the Rointokunaga type of flower with the Dendrobium phalaenopsis stripes and form. So that's really a huge achievement, in my opinion. But something to another one of the stripes. The cool thing about this cross is that your flowers almost last four months in the plant. Because you have the Laturia section on it, and those flowers last forever on the plant. So now you have this candy stripe dendrobium that you want to go buy for Roy that lasts three or four months in the spike. So I like flowers that last a long time. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't like to go to the greenhouse and see green. Yeah. I want to see colors. Okay. Right. So I do have a couple of these. Very, very easy to grow, by the way. They take a beating. They take abuse. And you can see all that stuff there that got put in there in the atrial violation. It's the um, Laturia section and drug that I got put there to be able to combine all this stuff together to get to this. Pretty cool. I have this picture here because this was grown in Michigan, of all the places. Blue Seas Mr. Tony, CCM. It's just a big plant, and I want you to remember this humongous plant in a five-inch pot. <laughs> if you're sleeping because I'm not loud enough, this is the slide I want you to pay attention to, because this is going to be the learning part of the dendrobium when I start talking about culture later. They have to be tied. They have to be potted, root bound, to be able to bloom. Otherwise, they will not bloom as profusely and successfully. Don't repot them. The biggest mistake that people do is that people would love to have space. They need to be, this is when, when I have a dendrobium like that, is when I start thinking about repotting it. Not ready to be repotting, thinking about repotting, because they have to be tight root bound like that. They like that. Okay? But that <coughs> exactly. You mentioned earlier that they don't, don't more. And that these only have like a couple of. We don't make a lot of cane, so that picture is a lot of different plants. And no, that's one plant. But it has a lot of cane. Of course it has a lot of canes because, <coughs> but, but wait, remember what I said. If you have more phalaenopsis dendrobium in the background, you're going to have less canes. Oh. As you go to the Latoria section, okay. you're going to have a lot of canes. Okay. Because the dendrobium phalaenopsis is the only dendrobium that dies back of oh, all the okay. species. You're right. The other ones don't. Okay. So this is very heavy, sorry, Nalaturia, I meant to say spatulata, sorry. This is very heavy spatulata dendrobium, so you're going to have successful specimen type. As you get to these forms where the flat looks very much like a dendrobium, like a phalaenopsis flower, you're going to have less cane. Okay. New kids on the block, the Australian dendrobiums. 
you have a uh, bigamum crossed with some other crazy things. So you gave it things like the Roman Warrigal and tie dye, mm -hmm. things like Mondrock, Ossie Stinky, things like the Roman Elegant Hard Time Fawn. You guys can grow these because you get a little cooler up here. They struggle in Dallas in summer. They need to be just a little cooler. Not Michigan, but they need to get a little cooler than in Dallas they get this trouble for me. The Australians. Yeah. Um, from a judging standpoint, we want the flowers to be round and full, which is to me a stupid standard for the judges, because when you have a Laturia and you have all these twisty petals, uh, a lot of centers like Puerto Rico Judging Center, they've broken free from thinking Round is good, not round is bad. <laughs> to me, I, I don't agree with the standard, but it's the standard, and I belong to the AOS judging system, so I have to adhere to the standard. But I'm a rebel, so every time I get one of these in the table, I give him a lot more points. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because I can. Because yeah. I started for six years, and I, damn it, if I want to give him more points, I'll give him more points. <laughs> Uh, now, the dorsal sepals are always larger than the lateral sepals. A lot of people, judges, especially, they don't know that. So the dorsal sepal is going to be a little taller and a little wider than the lateral sepals. So it's never going to be perfect triangle. So we have to be careful with that. And then uh, substance ranges from mat. So here's the interesting part. As you have more phalanopsy or phalaenopsis section, your flowers are going to be more matte. And you have more spatulata in the background. Your flowers are going to be uh, more waxy and shiny and diamond dust in colors. Arrangement and presentation says one person, no less than a perfect phalaenopsis shingling like this. But that's not true. Because if you have spatulata, you can wear a foxtail arrangement, like a Rico stylus. So that's acceptable as well. And I say that over there, I think you're going to read it now, but a foxtail type, when you have more spatulata and more shingly like a phalaenopsis, when you get more of the phalaenopsis section in the background. So, uh, again, hybridizers care about flower yield, seasonability, size of the flowers, length, bud length, etc. <coughs> now, in Dominican Republic, when I started growing, this is how I used to grow my dendrobiums. So it's a tropical country, so all just all of my greenhouse was was a shade cloth with a double liter Coca-Cola trays, because those are the perfect trays for those tall cases not to tip over. Mm -hmm. So I still use them today in Dallas for my dendrobium, because I can put four in a row, and I did grow them in gravel uh, in Dominican Republic, uh, a bunch of them growing there just happy as they can be. In the Dominican Republic, when you go to one of the dendrobium nurseries, this is how it looks like. This particular nursery uses a little bit of a taller pot, and the only reason they do that is so they put a little more, um, uh, but that's when they're ready in bloom to be sold, but usually there's like a little neck pot inside that, and they're very tight, so we want them to be tight. And uh, so they can put a lot of gravel on them so they don't tip over. So when they sell the plants, they don't tip over and the ladies are, you know, upset, whatever, when they buy the plants. And this is Pinky and Sabine, a full bench of them. It's really blue, it's really cool. Um, this is Sonia also. So. so from my growing experience, what have I learned? If you're going to take one takeaway today from this talk, is the tie feet. Do not overpot them, the drobiums. They do not like it. They will not bloom. Okay? This is good. This is probably as big as I will go for maybe three or four years on this plant. That's it. Now, because this has more phalaenopsis, some of these suitables will die back and we just have to take them out. But I wouldn't go to this size. This is overpotted. It's in bloom, but it's a little overpotted in my opinion. I will have this plant in this pot. I never go above five inches on the dendrobium, ever. Five inch pot, ever. 
ever. Again, ever, <laughs> never. I usually, most of my dendrobiums are blooming size, even if they're very tall, this tall, they're in a four inch pot. Never go above five inch pots. And I get reliable blooming every year. And that's how you start getting blooms from the old canes, when you have the very tight, okay? Growing gravel method that I use is gravel or crushed granite uh, only. I like this. Again, I'm gonna try to steal some of this Catalina today and take it with me. This is really, really this will work really well. This expanded um, glass that the uh, parkers are using. This will be ideal for the drugs. Do you have some of them on it? Oh yes. Yeah. I had some dendrobium, so I was in my car and they were kind of tall, so I left them at home. <laughs> We should have brought them. <laughs> well, if you have these dendrobiums in real small pots, I knew, I know they're supposed to be real small pots. Yeah. Well, and if you put them in gravel, gosh, don't you have to water them every other day? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. But you don't have to repot them forever. That's true. It's <laughs> been so humid, I haven't watered anything in probably 10 days now. Yeah. But I've got a pot yeah. that's this big around, it's Samurai Warrior. Yeah, it's, the it's a spatulata, antelope. Antelope. Yeah. antelope. yeah, and the antelopes, they can be in bigger pots, but they always you want them to be tight always, that's the trick. Right. Remove the spinning fluorescences, it's always a good habit to do on the drugs. Divide, when you divide, if you ever divide, you have to divide with at least four canes. Anything bigger, less smaller than four canes will set back that plant. You'll get a very small plant growing up, and the other one, was two suitable will die. I want to see at least, you know, this was maybe an emergency, you only have three, but I want to see at least four if you ever split on the If the four, the four that should, should they all have leaves? No, not okay. necessarily. Mm -hmm. Well, that was given to me because it was a division a couple well, weeks and, ago. And look, at the, and look at the nice plantlet that you got there with flowers. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, that's why we lose the leaves in the drawbium. That's why they drop. The sudden temperature change will make those leaves fall like next week. Mm. Very, 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 very sensitive to sudden temperature changes. And what do I do with my phalaenopsis? I want that 20 degree temperature differential to get them to bloom. So what happens to my dendrobiums? <laughs> Some leaves gone. <laughs> They're very sensitive, so that's why people, when they grow them, they grow them in a very constant temperature. Oh, I can't do that in my greenhouse, so I lose leaves all the time. Oh. I'm just come to terms that I'm going to lose leaves, lose leaves in my the drawers, that's it. Hmm. Kikis are not a good thing. You think you're doing something good. No. Kikis are a sign of root rot. If you're getting kikis on top of here, that means that your growing medium is going back. You are rotten in. You need to repower. I'm getting kikis on my dendrobium dogolates. That's a different story. Okay. okay. That's my fault. <laughs> We're talking about the palinanthi section okay. and, the, and, the, and the spatulata we section. We all go there today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you will get uh, kikis also in the novelis because that's what they do very often. But I will still check those roots if you're getting way too many kikis. Okay. So plenty of light. They take a lot of light. In the Dominican Republic, we grow them. Oh man, I should have put that picture in my presentation. I took that last week in the Dominican Republic. I'll show you the phone and I'll pass it along. So if you take full sun back home, this plant growing with humongous, tons of flowers. I should have put it here. So this is what we saw earlier. We're talking about it, right? Very tight, very tight in that growing medium. Um, one of the things that you gotta be careful with that little eye, uh, and the problem that the drugs have is that because they're planted, they, 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 have, they have eyes uh, almost next to the next growing medium, but if you bury it too much, there's other eyes that can come from the upper level of the cane and continue the growth of the plant, but you don't wanna do that because you, wanna, you don't wanna rot the, the whole bottom section and sometimes it's difficult. So you want that eye to always be exposed when you repot one of those endrobes. The very bottom eye, as long as it's a viable eye, 
And when I'm talking about I, I'm talking about that right. I there, right? I always leave that I when I plant 